All right, thrift store slash yard sale video number two. I'll start with the first thrift store that I went to. Uh, this thrift store was a little bit different. I was checking out the books and there was a lady there looking at the books and I was like, I can't find any prices. Do you know how much the books are? And she's just like, oh, you just kind of fill up your cart and take it to the front and they'll tell you what the price is. So I'm like, well, don't really know what I want to get if I don't know what the price is, but I'll go check with the guy at the front and see what he says. And he basically said the same thing. And he's like, rough estimate, like probably hardbacks or around a dollar, paperbacks or 50 cents. So I'm just like, I'll go back, fill up my cart with as much stuff as I could possibly think that I might want. And then I'll just take it up there and see what happens. So start out with a couple of movies. I'm kind of weird with movies. I don't really like to know anything about the movies going into them. I just like to have a clean slate, figure things out as they go. I just pretty much figure out who the actors are, the director, and see if it seems like something I might be interested in. I haven't seen either of these movies that I got. The first one is Patriot Games with Harrison Ford. And the other one is Lost in Translation with Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson. Love Bill Murray, so I had to pick this one up. And I'll get into the books. First one is The Day of the Jackal by Frederick Forsyth. And usually when people do book hauls and the like, they'll read a bit of the synopsis, so I guess I'll do that for you guys. It says, His mission, kill President Charles de Gaulle. His codename, Jackal. His price, half a million dollars. His demand, total secrecy even from his employers. Sounds interesting enough. Next one, Shattered Moon by Kate Green. She was trained to see what was hidden from ordinary eyes, and she knew better than to become involved with any matter that concerned the LAPD, but a young woman was missing. How could Teresa Fortunato refuse to help the distraught parents? How could she know that from her first startling vision, she would be led deeper and deeper into the encroaching dark? That her most precious gift, her healing vision, would become her most dangerous enemy, filling every moment with mounting menace, turning the secrets of her own past murderously against her, leaving her no refuge but madness, death, and a shattered moon. Then I got... The Devil Wears Prada. If you haven't seen that movie, I guess you've been living under a rock. I, my ignorant self didn't know that uh, the movie was actually based on a book. So I guess I'll give this one a shot. I honestly don't even remember the movie. It was so long ago that I saw it, but figured I'd pick this up because I saw some reference to The Devil Wears Prada like yesterday or the day before. And so and when I saw this, I was like, timing seems right, so I'll grab it. Next one I got, John Irving, A Prayer for Owen Meany. Heard some good stuff about this book. Sounded pretty interesting too from the synopsis. Owen Meany, the only child of a New Hampshire granite qu courier, believes he is God's instrument. He is. This is John Irving's most comic novel, yet Owen Meany is Mr. Irving's most heartbreaking character. Pretty simple synopsis, but caught my attention. Next one is... Taipan by James Claybell says Blood and Guts Fiction is back. A superb book. He was the ruler, the Taipan of the most powerful trading company in the Far East. He was also a pirate, an opium smuggler, a master manipulator of men, a ruthless intriguer, and a mighty lover. This pretty much just caught my attention because of the title, Taipan, I think is the name of the snake and I like snakes. And then when I read more about it, it seemed pretty good. Next one I got is City of the Sun by David Levine. Looks like it's the first book in a novel. It says introducing private detective Frank Bear. Private detective Frank Bear has been content living a solitary life, working on a few simple cases and attempting to move on from his painful past. But when Paul and Carol Gabriel ask him to help them find their missing son, he can hardly refuse. Going against everything he fears, 
Bear's been around too long to hope for a happy ending. He enters into an uneasy partnership with Paul on a quest for the truth that will become both dangerous and haunting. Ooh. Next one, Insomnia by Stephen King. I would read the synopsis of it, but I already know that I like Stephen King, and so I don't even want to know anything about it. Kind of like with the movies, I just want to go into this one with a clean slate. So that one should be pretty good. Then into the hardbacks. First one is The Justicer by Thomas Fall. Looks like uh, this guy is from the same state that I'm from. So I figured I'd pick this up. I live in a state that was former Indian territory, so this book kind of reflects that. Uh, gosh, the synopsis on these is really long, but let me see if I can just sum it up in my own words. Um, basically, it takes place in 1889. It's about a judge. Mm, he's got an Indian client. And it's a courtroom drama. Next one is Identical by Scott Turo. I've seen this guy's name so many times when I've been to the thrift stores and never picked anything of his up, I don't think. And so I just decided to go ahead and give this one a shot. Uh, let me see what it was about that seemed pretty interesting. This one's got a sh short synopsis. I'll just read it for you. Identical. State Senator Paul Giannis is a candidate for mayor of Kendall County. His identical twin brother, Cass, is newly released from prison 25 years after pleading guilty to the murder of his girlfriend, Dita Coronan. When Evan Miller, an ex-FBI agent who is the lead of security for the Cronin family business, and private investigator Tim Brody begin a reinvestigation of Dita's death, they find themselves ensnared in a tangle of deception as only Scott Turow could weave. All right, next one, Ninth Circle by N.J. Crisp. Uh, here's another really long synopsis on these. Let's see. Someone intends to kill Stephen Hayden, the cunning entrepreneur who makes his not-quite-honest living by smuggling human cargo under the Iron Curtain, is caught in a dangerous web of intrigue when he agrees to find the missing husband of the beguiling Petra Baron. I'll just go with that for now. Seemed pretty interesting. Last one from the first thrift store. Chuck Norris, The Secret of Inner Strength. Or The Secret Power Within. The little thing on the back kind of threw me off. But, uh, I mean, come on, it's Chuck Norris. I think it's an autobiography. So that's it for the first thrift store. So when I got to the front, oh, actually, I got one more thing. Forgot to bring this over. Got this rack for the DVDs. So that one, when I got to the front, took the, uh, the shopping cart up there, and I was like, all right. So they told me they're just gonna quote me a price. Let's see what they give me and see what we think. So he says five bucks for everything sold. Now I'll get into our selection from Goodwill here. So Goodwill, this one that I went to, they said that all the books are $1.50 and DVDs are two for five. So I usually wouldn't have even bought DVDs at that price, but I found a couple really interesting ones. And so I decided to just go ahead and pick them up. First one is Terminator 2 Judgment Day in this really cool case, metal. Next one is Lawrence of Arabia. I would have picked this one up either way, but it's got kind of like a book style to it. Pretty cool. Haven't seen Lawrence of Arabia and I haven't seen Terminator 2 in a long time. And I got one book from Goodwill, which 
is the sales Bible. I work in sales, so I thought this one would be an appropriate one to pick up. And as I was getting ready to film this video, I was flipping through and Jason, I don't know whoever you are, but uh, not sure why you donated an autographed copy, but I figured that was pretty cool. Jason. So that's it for the thrift stores. And next I will get into the yard sale. So this yard sale was pretty crazy actually. I showed up, I was just driving around, ran across it, and this was like the most massive yard sale that I've ever seen. There was not even a square foot of yard without just boxes piled out all over the place. And so I get up there and I was like, is this just a yard sale? And he's like, yeah, it's kind of a closeout for an old antique store that was closing down. And so we're just putting everything out here. He's like, everything's going to be pretty cheap, but if you fill up a box, it'll be a lot cheaper. Um, so just fill one up and we'll see what happens. So I was like, okay, that's kind of weird because that was like the same thing that happened with the first uh, thrift store where it was just kind of, you know, <laughs> fill something up and s then we'll figure out how much we're paying at the end. So I'll show you everything and then let you know what I paid for it all. Um, a lot of these were really old antique style books. Uh, first one, Red Men in White. I guess with these, instead of a synopsis, because a lot of them are just, you know, these old hardbacks that don't have one, I'll just tell you what year they're from. I mean, look at that. Falling apart. Oh, wow. So, New York and London, Harper and Brothers Publishers, 1899. Next one, American Fights and Fighters by Cyrus Townsend Brady. Sometimes I forget to say the authors, but hopefully you guys can see them all. And this one is from 1900. This one, a bit more recent, not too recent, but uh, for all my rednecks out there, Jeff Foxworthy. No shirt, no shoes, no problem. I think that was an old country song back in the day. Walk Two Moons. This one, I think, was a Newberry Award winner. Yeah, 1995 John Newberry Medal. I'll go ahead and read the synopsis on this one. 13-year-old Salamanca Treehill, known as Sal, is traveling from Ohio to Idaho with her grandparents in search of her mother. Along the way, she tells them the story of Phoebe Winterbottom, who received mysterious messages, met a potential lunatic, and whose mother disappeared. Beneath Phoebe's story is Sal's story and that of her mother, who left one day for Idaho and has not returned. Sal has less than a week to get to Idaho in time for her mother's birthday and bring her back. Despite her father's warning that she is fishing in the air, whatever that means, Sal knows this journey is the only chance she has for reuniting her family. Next one is Tucker by Louis L'Amour. Louis L'Amour is becoming one of my favorite authors. I'll go ahead and read the synopsis on this one too. If a man won't fight for what is rightly his, then he ain't much account. With this challenge from his dying father, young Shell Tucker rode out after three men who had stolen the $20,000 his father was carrying. Two of them he hunted, Doc Sites and Kid Reese, were his friends. Dreaming of adventure, Tucker had wanted to join their gang. But now, with his father gone and the people back at home desperately in need of the proceeds from the cattle drive, Shell was determined to uphold his father's reputation and recover their money. He knew the odds were against him. Finding his friends would be difficult. Getting the money back would be nearly impossible. All right, back to some more of the old ones. This one is called Damien's Daughter by Edwin Colbert. Let's 
see when this one is from. 1949. Back to another one of the newer ones, Nothing Lasts Forever by Sidney Sheldon. Three young doctors, their hopes, their dreams, their unexpected desires. Dr. Paige Taylor. She swore it was euthanasia, but when Paige inherited a million dollars from a patient, the DA called it murder. Dr. Cat Turner. She vowed never to let another man too close again until she accepted the challenge of a deadly bet. Dr. Honey Taft. To make it in medicine, she knew she'd need something more than the brains God gave her. Nothing Less Forever races from life and death decisions of a big San Francisco hospital to the tension-packed fireworks of a murder trial. It lays bare the ambitious ambitions and fears of healers and killers, lovers and betrayers. As the story surges toward its unpredictable climax, Sidney Sheldon proves once again that no reader can outguess the master of the unexpected. All right, then we got Eight Great Tragedies. This was the complete text of the world's great tragedies from ancient times to the present. Um, there's clearly eight tragedies on here. First one is Prometheus bombed by Aeschylus. Then Oedipus the King by Sophocles. Hippolytus by Euripides, King Lear by Shakespeare, Ghost by Isbin, Miss Julie by Strindberg, On um, Bale Strand by Yeats, and Desire Under the Elms by O'Neill. Getting kind of deep into some parts of this box here. And we've got Dream of Orchids by Phyllis A. Whitney. I think these books are a little bit newer. We'll see what this one is from. 85, so. This little section of books aren't that old. Next one out of those is The Delta Star by Joseph Wambaugh. Then we've got Elmore Leonard's Bandits. And last is Floodgate by Alistair McLean. A lot of these books I didn't really know anything about. If the title seemed somewhat interesting, I went ahead and picked them up just because I was banking on getting a pretty sweet deal. Next we've got The Squaw Man. This one's another old one. Let's see if I can find a date on this one. Nineteen oh six. Here's one that's not as old. Marie, a true story by Peter Mass. I'll just read a little bit out of this one. Marie is the true story of one woman alone who risked everything, her reputation, her financial security, even her life, to challenge a ruthless political machine bent on corrupting an entire state. Pretty much anything about uh, corrupt politics I enjoy. Next one is the story of Dr. Doolittle. thought that was pretty cool running into that one. Like that illustration on the front there. Pretty sure everybody knows what Dr. Doolittle's about. Another old one here. The story of insert the name of my state here that I don't really want to say yet. <laughs> then the story of American Pictures by Alan C. Collins. See when this one came out. Mm, or maybe not. But uh, I just flipped through this a little bit. There's a ton of old pictures in this thing. All right. 
Then Jaws. I just saw the movie Jaws not too long ago, and I didn't even know. This is another one that I didn't know that the movie was based on a book until recently. And we've got The Trampling Herd by Paul J. Wellman. I don't think this one is too old. Oh, here's another one that I don't know if it was signed by the author or someone just wrote that in there, but if that's another signed one, then that'd be crazy if I found two in one day. Let's see, this one is from 1939, so that's a really old one too. Then this one's a little bit different. I've never really considered buying one of these, but then again, this yard sale was a little bit different as well, so I went ahead to, and, and decided to pick it up. But it's Reader's Digest Condensed Books, so I guess it's just like uh, highly edited um, versions of these books. But um, Ken Follett, from the little bit that I've read about him, seems like a pretty good doctor author and then cry wild i mean it's got some type of wolf husky looking thing so figured that might be good then i've got an old copy of how to win friends and influence people by dale carnegie i have a another copy of this but it's uh, this book and then another together getting down to the end here We've got How I Train Myself from Failure to Success in Selling. So another book about selling. So decided to go ahead and pick this one up too. Go good with the sales Bible. wonder how old this one is. I think the sales Bible is from the 90s. And this one is from 1949. Wow. Hopefully there's still some relevant stuff in there today. Now, this one is a book that is about one of my favorite TV shows when I was a kid. The Twisted Tale of the World's Most Famous Cat, Felix. Don't know if he's the most famous cat. I would have probably said Garfield is the most famous cat, but I like Felix a lot more than Garfield. Then down to the last two, they had a few different... Ones of these, they're like leather bound. Um, the Old West books. Uh, got a bunch of different pictures and illustrations and stuff in there. But they have them on a bunch of different topics. I only decided to get these couple because these are the ones that I was most interested in. And some of them were really beat up. Um, like not even readable, beat up. But the first one I got is on The Gamblers, which is a hobby of mine. And the second one that I got is The Gunfighters, which not so much a hobby of mine, but uh, still thought it'd be pretty interesting. And that is it for <laughs> the yard sale, finally. So, like I was saying, usually when I go into yard sales, I like to have some type of idea of what the price is going to be going in. So, I know when I'm ready to leave, I know exactly what I want, and I can figure out on negotiating prices from there. But, the first trip at the thrift store with the similar situation went well, so I was just like, alright, let's see what happens. So, this whole box filled with books... I take it up there and I'm like, hey, I got a box full of books. So he kind of looks at it, picks up a couple of books. Didn't even bother to look through the whole thing to see if I was trying to like maybe sneak something in there that might have even been a little more valuable. Um, but he just looked, uh, looked through a couple and he's like, uh, how about a buck? <laughs> so uh, hell yeah. So got a full box of books, antique books for a dollar. Um, pretty sweet day. Crazy, the, uh, the most expensive thing that I did was go to Goodwill. I think I paid, it, what, it was like eight bucks total after everything 
for those two DVDs and the sales Bible. But then that one was the one that was signed. So, I mean, just great deals all around today. Um, haven't made one of these videos in a while. Wasn't really planning on making one for a while, but I got so many awesome deals today that I just had to make a video about it. So hopefully you guys managed to sit through this whole thing, enjoyed it, and see you later.